Work is the ability to create change in the environment. A particle must have a charge before it can cause any kind of change in its environment. So for you to radiate the love of God to others, to bring health and healing, and to transform your environment requires you to have a charge. We have to transcend individual mind and begin crossing over into universal mind. And the more we access it and step into it, again, the more power and effectiveness we have as a servant on this planet. So it's been a while since I've done any videos on the spiritual intelligence series, but I want to take you back into this framework of the SQ chart to show you where we're heading as we practice this discipline, this third discipline. So basically the journey of ascension is the crossing over from the individual mind to the universal mind. And so the seven chakras within our body serve as the sort of roadmap or the blueprint right, of that ascension journey. As we raise our kundalini energy, that meeting point between the upward and downward spiraling energies, moves higher and higher up the chakras, greater and greater expansion of consciousness takes place and greater abilities and power and charge in consciousness is created. And as we know here, in order to do work in consciousness, we have to have a charge. Work is the ability to create change in the environment from even a quantum level. A particle must have a charge before it can cause any kind of change in its environment. So for you to radiate the love of God to others, to bring health and healing and to transform your environment requires you to have a charge. Yeah. And that's why we emphasize Kundalini awakening so that literally the, the nerve fluid in our spine is raised higher and higher causing a greater polarization of our energy, which creates greater love being felt, greater psychic abilities to uh, empathize with others, to, to feel what others feel, to hear their thoughts and be able to speak to them at the level of their own state of consciousness and be of the greatest possible service, yeah? We need a charge in order to do that. So that means we have to transcend individual mind and begin crossing over into universal mind. Well, what is universal mind? Of course, it's the I am. It's knowing yourself as I am. That's the universal mind, right? We all share the same I am. The exact feeling you have right now that you are the subject of your experience, that you are the observer, right? You are the everything's revolving around you, the subject, the I. That feeling you have right now is the same exact feeling I have as I'm speaking. And it's the same exact feeling that everyone on this call has right now. It's the universal mind. And the more we access it and step into it, again, the more power and effectiveness we have as a servant on this planet. So here is the new Ascension Spiral, <laughs> updated and revitalized for hopefully better understanding. So this is obviously not meant to be a literal exact picture. This is just a loose reference of the way I'm trying to show you this perspective of how ascension happens. So we know that we do not ascend in a linear fashion. Yeah, we don't ascend in a straight line, but we ascend in spirals. And this actually hangs a lot of people up, right? Probably all of you have been hung up by this misunderstanding that spiritual ascension should be a linear thing, meaning when I deal with that trauma, with that shadow, it should be the last time. I already healed this. Why is it coming up again? Why do I have to keep dealing with this old freaking trauma? That's because ascension is not a straight line. It's a spiral. So thinking about a spiral, we've talked about this before, a vibration on a two dimensional plane looks like this. Yeah, up and down, up and down. But if we put a vibration in a three dimensional picture, it actually looks like this, a spiral, right? Like this. So all energy is spiraling. And that includes our journey of ascension. Everything is just energy. So our journey of ascension spirals, meaning all of us when we begin our spiritual ascension, 
have a certain amount of negatively polarized energy in our field and a certain amount of positively polarized energy. And Ra, Ra calls this the sinkhole of indifference in the law of one, meaning you haven't gained a positive or a negative charge yet. You haven't fully selected which of those two polarities you want. So to select a polarity means to begin polarizing in that direction and eliminating the opposite polarity from your energy field. And so as we know here and we study here and practice here, we do this in three ways, the three disciplines of the personality and or gross purification, subtle purification and causal purification. So at the first level of the spiral, we have the gross level of emotions. And as you see in the diagram, the lower part of the spiral is a much longer spiral, isn't it? It's a slower, denser energy at that level, at the level of the physical body and the emotions we feel in the body. So at this level, when we begin our spiritual awakening, we go through the dark night of the soul and we have to deal with these heavy, negatively polarized energies from our traumas, from our past, from our shame. And we have to begin loving them and forgiving them. So that's why you go through periods where you feel really great. You're in that positively polarized part of your spiral, but eventually you're going to have to go back around and meet that negative energy, right? It's like you're having a new chance to sweep out more negative energy. Every time you make a circle around the spiral, a rotation around the spiral. So as you see, the farther up the spiral we go, the less time we spend in that negatively polarized energy and this was a little bit harder to depict <laughs> on this diagram. But as you can also see, the, the color, the, the intensity of the negative energy gets lighter at each level. So it's the densest, you know, red being the color of the negative polarity on this diagram. It's the most red at the gross level. As we go up, it gets a little bit lighter and even lighter still at the third level, because not only do we spend less time in the negative, as we heal and as we ascend, but the intensity of the energy, the negative energy is less as well. So we lower the time spent in our negative energy and the intensity of that energy, right? Like you've all experienced this at this point, whether you know it or not. Think about your first real dark night of the soul. It was just absolutely almost unmanageable in its intensity, right? You're, you feel like you're going insane for the most part. You're dealing with emotions that you feel like they're just eating your lunch every day, just whooping your ass. Am I making any progress? These emotions are just killing me all day. I can't escape this depression. I can't escape this anxiety. And you go weeks, months, maybe feeling that dark, dense, heavy, negative energy constricting your energy field. And then finally, you get a little breath of fresh air as you start to move into that positively polarized part of the spiral where now you're integrating and you're, you're getting some br a breath of fresh air and you're feeling good again and you're, you're gaining hope again. Ah, oh, maybe I healed, maybe I'm ascending now. And then after a few weeks or whatever, you go back into the negative part of the spiral again. But as we say, every time you meet something, you, you depolarize more of its energy. So the next time you face it, it's a little bit less intense and has a little bit less duration that it's able to show up in your mind, in your emotions. So as we know, the gross level of healing is the first discipline. Well, sorry, it's technically the second discipline that Ra gives in the law of one, but it's the accept yourself discipline, love yourself. We have to love what we feel. We have to accept what we feel without resistance. And as we do that, we heal from the gross level and we move higher. And so this accepting yourself, loving yourself, we said is of paramount importance to begin accessing your I am power because love is the charge, right? We talk about you need a charge in consciousness. Well, a thought has no charge without an emotion. So the emotion is the love you feel, the joy, the gratitude. Those emotions charge your consciousness positively. And how can you have a positive emotion unless you first practice self-love, self-acceptance? If all you do is reject yourself, if all you do is devaluate yourself, good luck creating a positive charge. 
because you're creating a negative charge, right? Very simple here. We're just talking about simple polarity dynamics. But I wanna preface that just because I'm showing you these three levels is also not implying that you can't work in all three at the same time. You absolutely can work at the gross level, the subtle level, and the causal level at the same time. But here's the caveat, and I hope you guys get this. If you haven't done sufficient work on the gross level and you're trying to jump to the causal level and learn from your life catalysts and, and heal your karma and stuff like that, you're gonna find it very difficult. Why? Because those lower, denser energies are always going to drag you back down. It's like tying a little rock or a weight to a bird, right? The bird's trying to fly, but it's got this heavy weight pulling it down. So it has to exert tremendous effort to lift off into the air. But as soon as you snip that string, the bird flies effortlessly. That's kind of like what our healing journey feels like when we try to get to the really advanced stuff like catalyst integration before we've even healed our traumas and emotions, right? Before we've developed a loving relationship with our feelings. And so it's not that you can't work on all three levels. It's just that it would do you best to start at the lowest, densest level and focus most of your attention there. It's gonna allow you to ascend the fastest that way. It's the most efficient way to move up the ascension spiral. Because think about it, how can you truly meet your life circumstances if you're full of reactivity? That's what an emotional body that's heavily burdened with negative energy is like. You react, you get triggered so intensely by your life when, when somebody says an unkind thing to you or does something selfish, it just throws you into rage and anger. And you're, it's like, good luck trying to pass that catalyst now. You know, you're being, you're being run by your negative emotions. So you better just practice dealing with that emotion first. Get to the catalyst later, right? It'll always be there waiting for you. So that's the one caveat. Now let's look at a quote from St. Germain in the I Am Discourses about loving thyself, loving the I Am. He says, it seems to me, beloved students, that you cannot fail to grasp this simplicity of your true God self acting in you. Ever turn to it, praising it, loving it, demanding and commanding it to surge forth into every cell of your body, into every demand of the outer activity, in the home, in your affairs, in business. When your desire is sent forth clothed in the God presence, power and intelligence, it cannot fail. It must bring to you that which you desire. So here Saint Germain is really touching on the power that love generates when you love, praise, adore, worship, the I am presence in yourself. That's the highest form of self-love. And you gain such an incredible charge that whatever you desire is sent forth clothed in that God presence and it must bring you what you desire. So this is our practice for gross purification. Love everything you feel as an expression of I am. Even my negative feelings, as we know here, are expressions of the I am trying to let you know you're thinking about yourself incorrectly. Yeah, you're qualifying your energy falsely. Correct this wrong perspective of yourself. As long as you see yourself as limited or lacking or unworthy of love or abused or abandoned or anything of the sort, you cannot gain that charge you're looking for to feel happiness from within. You cannot truly use the I am power for manifestation and creating your reality. So those negative feelings are still the God power acting in you. Can you see that? So we should never reject a negative emotion. We should thank it as being the God presence speaking to us through our emotions. If I ever feel out of my peace, if I ever feel my energy shifting to the negative, I clue in immediately and I say, ah, thank you, sadness or anger or fear for showing me that my perception has gone awry somewhere. I've gone off track in my thinking. 
please show me where it is so I can make the necessary correction. That's the most self-loving thing you could ever do. To heal your mind is the most loving thing you can do to yourself. If you love yourself, then you want to be happy. Yeah? And everybody wants to be happy. Nobody alive doesn't want to be happy. And that's because secretly, deep down, whether they know it or not, they love themselves. Self-love is there in all beings, but we have to find it through the I am. And so we find it by practicing it. Yeah, what you give is what you receive. What you share is what you increase in yourself. So we practice loving others. We practice being kind to others, being patient with others, and likewise with ourself. So the, the discipline of accept thyself is to love the great I am within you to the extent that you are no longer willing to tolerate a single unloving, disempowered, or self-devaluating thought ever again. That's self-love. I refuse to allow another unloving thought to pass through my mind without immediately correcting it. Why? Because I love myself. I love my true and perfect self beyond anything else. And so I'm no longer willing to tolerate unloving thoughts about me. Love your I am with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Didn't Jesus say that was the greatest commandment in the law? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But what is God? God is the first person in the present tense. I am. Exactly right, Patty. God is the I am in you. So to love the Lord your God is to love the I am with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then Jesus said, the second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor's I am as yourself or love your neighbor's I am as your own. Can you see that? This is perfect love. This is how we practice perfect love. Perfect love is love for the perfect. Love the perfection in you and in everyone and in everything. And I promise you, you will heal your traumas, your distortions, your blockages faster than your, you ever thought possible. When that much love is charged in your energy field, when you're charging yourself up with love like that, those shadows quickly surface into the light because they finally see someone that's going to accept them and love them and have compassion on them. So the more of a loving charge you create in your heart chakra, the more effortlessly and easily you heal your negative emotions. And we move through the lower part of the ascension spiral. Okay, let's go to the second level. The second level of the ascension spiral is the level of mind, thought, mentalism. That's the subtle level. So on, in subtle purification, we begin healing our thoughts, which we also call self-correction in this practice of I am. So this is know yourself. Know yourself is that that discernment we talked about of truth and illusion, truth from falsity, love from fear. And so when we step into this, this discipline of know thyself, we have to become intimately acquainted with our distortions, with our patterns, our conditioning and our blockages. So we start paying very close attention to the way that we react to life. We start paying very close attention to the thoughts we think about life. So in this discipline, the way we move through the subtle level of the ascension spiral is by practicing self-correction as often as possible. So it could be more simply defined as how mindful are you being throughout the day? You know, are you just kind of barreling through your day from one task to the next? Or are you slowing down in your mind? Are you more present and still within as you perform each daily task? And are you checking in with yourself? Are you monitoring your state of being? Are you monitoring your quality of consciousness? And every time you notice it contract, you say, hey, wait a minute, peace is my nature. So why is my peace contracting right now? Ah, there must be an incorrect thought in my mind. Simple, right? 
your state of being is always telling you when self-correction is needed. Like literally guys, how much easier could the divine creator have made this for us? <laughs> your perfect barometer is installed in your emotional body already. You cannot miss it. You couldn't miss it if you wanted to miss it. <laughs> You couldn't miss your negative feelings, and we know because we try to, right? You couldn't miss your negative feelings even if you wanted to miss them. That's how powerful your state of being is. You are your state of being. Your quality of consciousness in this moment is who you are in this moment. And so when something is coming up, some dirty thought of guilt or shame, then it's your state of being is going to respond and it's going to contract. And you say, ah, thank you emotions for telling me that there's an incorrect thought. I'm ready to see it. And you quickly find the culprit and you bring self-correction to it. Requalify everything that even seems to be false in your mind, right? Even if you don't think you need to do it anyways, because what do you have to lose by qualifying everything with love and perfection? You lose nothing, right? But this part of the spiritual ascension spiral gets increasingly difficult. This is why it's called the subtle level, because the mind is very subtle. At, you know, at first, when we start to enter the subtle level of the ascension spiral and we become aware of our thought world and we start correcting the more obvious thoughts of, I'm such a loser, nobody loves me, blah, blah, blah. We notice those thoughts pretty quickly. But as we're in this practice of requalifying every thought with love and with perfection, the movements of the ego get a little harder to see. And so that demands our awareness to keep expanding. And of course, it naturally does so on its own. You don't have to be like, I need to expand my awareness. There I go. Okay, great. I just gained a little more awareness. Now let me apply it. It's not even that difficult. <laughs> see how easy the source made this for us? Awareness is always expanding already. Just by virtue of what you heal, your awareness expands. You don't even have to do anything to make it expand other than to be aware. So be more aware of your reactivity. So don't think that there's not potentially dozens of these subtle little thoughts moving through your mind that you can correct if you become incredibly sensitive to your state of being, if you honor and cherish your state of being above all else such that you're not willing to be in any other state anymore when you love the i am to that level i promise you you're going to notice when your state of being constricts as if somebody's shouting from the mountaintop at you it'll be that obvious right it's like an elephant in the room whereas before it was like a snake in the grass <laughs> you know it slipped right through your mind without you hardly noticing it so this is the practice of self-correction that has to go on in us. So I want to give you this quote from St. Germain to spell this out. He says, students of the truth wonder why they cannot hold a firm anchor in their decision to hold fast to the God presence, which is their dominion. They do not analyze their outer expression to see what is lurking there to cause disturbance, question, and doubt. But for those who will take the authority, which is theirs, and probe deep into their motives, there it is, it will be so easy to pluck out the tares from the golden grain and soon be free from the disturbance that causes them to doubt themselves and the very presence of God which beats their hearts. When students will be honest enough with themselves and their God, the I Am Presence, to pluck out by the roots anything that is causing disturbance within them and be able to feel the mighty light and radiance of the great God self, they will require little effort in loosing the great I am presence in love and intelligence. Whoo, what a walloper, huh? What a quote. So there is everything we just talked about distilled into one paragraph. So then we move to the causal level which is the level of our actions or our life catalysts. This is causal purification to watch your actions in time and space and say, hey, why did I act that way? Why did I do that? Why did I choose that? 
Your life experiences are showing you why you act the way you act. Yeah, if there's resistance in you, life will show you. Life will bring you experiences that act as a mirror to your state of mind and say, hey, did you just notice the way you acted there? Did you notice how maybe that action was better than in the past, but still leaves a lot to be desired in the way of love? You know, you could have been more loving and patient there. You know, life is showing you all this stuff. And as we learn from our life catalysts, we heal our karma. So I often also call the causal level, the karmic level or karmic purification. And that of course is becoming the creator, loosing the I am presence, as we just described into my life, operating from the I am state is becoming the creator. It's practicing the I am state. So when a life experience, when a challenge, a, a difficult circumstance appears in my life, a big bill comes in the mail, a big conflict with my spouse or something like that, I must immediately practice the I am state and applying my I am power to that situation. So here's where we say, just get in the habit of practicing the I am state as often as possible. Yeah, the more you do it, the more you charge it up. And the more you charge it up, the more powerfully it acts in your world. The more that you act from the I am state, the more you become identified with the I am. Yeah, the more you practice being the I am, the more you'll actually feel like you are the I am. There's no other way to identify perfectly than to practice perfect identification. So practicing the I am state is becoming the creator. And this is the sure road to mastery. You guys, this is how we reach the 150 level of SQ is by practicing the I am state. So literally it's this simple, right? I'm drinking a glass of water and I apply the I am to it. I am the life giving power that charges this water with nourishing electromagnetic energy filling and renewing every cell of my body. I mean, it's fun to do this. It feels good to do this. You start to enjoy it so much that you just want to do it. <laughs> you just want to qualify everything you're doing with the I am power. Before you go to meet with some friends, you say, I am the perfect poise of speech and action at all times. I am the presence of divine love at all times. And everyone who comes into my presence feels my love. You're just charging up your I am before you hang out with some friends. Before you pay a bill, right? You're going on the website to click the payment through and you stop for a second and you say, I am the infinite abundance supplying this need. Click. That's it. Simple. Before you go to sleep at night, I am the presence that watches over my body as I sleep, giving me deep, restorative rest in every way. And then you pass out. <laughs> you see how you can literally become the creator in every moment. You can apply the I am power to every possible circumstance. There's never a moment that you can't apply it. It applies to anything because you are that you are always the I am, whether you are consciously aware of it or not is the only question. How do we become consciously aware that we're the I am practicing it, applying it? This is the road to mastery. So St. Germain says to seek, find and apply the law of one's own being is the student's sure road to mastery. And only when the individual has attained it himself, may he really understand what true mastery is. There is only one mastery to be sought, and that is over one's own outer self. So what is the outer self? It's the, the personality. As we talk about the disciplines of the personality is the disciplines of the outer self, the mind, the ego, the emotions, all everything you can experience as awareness is the outer self. And so as a course in miracle says, I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. I rule my outer self, which I alone must rule. I rule every thought. I rule every emotion. I rule every action. 
I am the power that rules every circumstance. This has to be a conviction you build in yourself. And so as we reach the causal level, let's say that we've, we've mastered the emotional level, the gross level to where all our emotions are now is a readout of our state of being. We have no resistance at all. We have no fear at all about what emotions may arise today. Can you guys imagine living in that state? Some of you probably are already or beginning to step into that state where you've completely lost fear about anything that may arise today. You do not fear if an anxious feeling might arise. You do not fear if some depression might arise. Why? Because you know who you are now. You know you're the master of everything. And so you're like, bring it on, baby. If something negative wants to manifest, let's go. I'm ready to love it. I'm ready to heal it and requalify it because I am the master of my state of being. That's real embodiment. That's real integration. And so then we move into the subtle level of thoughts and we, be, we begin correcting our thoughts and requalifying them to where now I have no fear of what my mind might think today. I fear no thought. I fear no memory resurfacing. I fear no selfish beliefs coming up. I'm ready for whatever the mind throws at me today because I know I am the master of my mind. That's mastering the subtle level. And then we move into the causal level of catalyst integration. And we no longer fear what life itself may bring up today. We no longer fear any circumstance arising. If death itself comes knocking on my door, I fling my arms wide open to it because I know I'm an eternal being and I know only God's will prevails or exists. So if I'm meant to die today, hallelujah, my life incarnation is complete. What a gift, what a blessing, what a celebration. I have no fear of this illusion called death. And without the fear of death, life is nothing but a friend and a companion to be embraced, a teacher to be learned from, a guru to study under. So once I no longer fear any life circumstance, not even death itself, not even being found at the opposite end of a gun barrel, every circumstance that arises in my life, I meet it with presence, love, peace, and awareness. That's the final level of, of healing and purification. And then we move from the ascension spiral like this. We clear out the gross level. We clear out the subtle level. And when we clear out the causal level, we become what Ra calls the crystallized being. Yeah, fully positively polarized energy field is the crystallized being. A crystal is what? one single mineral element without any contamination. And because it is one single mineral element, it is strong without effort. It has a perfect structure. It is beautiful to behold and it conducts and channels light beautifully, creating sparkles and reflections and maybe even rainbow colors as you shine light through a crystal. L uh, crystals can hold energy can hold tremendous amounts of energy and charge and can then be given to someone else as a healing instrument. So we become a living crystal as we move up the ascension spiral. So these are the dynamics to look for. And this is why I said this is hopefully going to be very encouraging and very empowering for you to see this visual this way is that the spiral gets tighter and tighter as we go up because our vibration gets faster and faster. Right at the bottom of the spiral, it's a really long, slow, dense vibration. Yeah. And as we pick up our frequency, the vibration gets faster and faster and the spiral is getting tighter and tighter. And so we're getting more charged as that energy is faster. So our, our frequency is picking up literally in speed. The photon is picking up in speed within our consciousness, which allows us access to higher realms of consciousness. So look at what is awaiting us, everyone. Once we heal ourselves, once we do the work, once we apply these three disciplines as our absolute all consuming devotion in our life is we become like a living crystal that divine energy channels through us effortlessly. 
like the saint, like the sage, like the ascended master, where miracles just manifest in their presence, half the time unbeknownst to them, because the charge is so great that just their very existence on earth is a blessing and an act of service to everyone. Who wants that kind of light in their quality of consciousness? I'll take some of that. So this is what we're working towards. I hope you can see the picture now. Becoming crystallized is the road to mastery. And we're stepping in from that heart chakra level, which we practiced heavily through 2022 and most of 2023, being in loving relationship. You know, that's the prerequisite, yeah? Get into the heart by being in loving relationship with everything, with your mind, your emotions, your world, other people. And then once you've established loving relationship as your standard, you can start really easily stepping into that I am state and applying your I am presence and power to everything. Now we're moving into the fifth chakra level. And from there, it will take us naturally to the third eye level in due time, whenever you know we're ready to move into that level. So everyone is at their own stage of this journey. Everyone's at their own unique SQ level, but the practices, the disciplines are identical for all of us. And that's what makes it um, such an easy journey to understand is that really, as Ra says, we're just asked to do these three things, to know ourself, to love ourself, and practice being the creator that we truly are.